what, what the haters talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? Dr. William Pepper says that Martin Luther King Jr. was murdered in a conspiracy instigated by then FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover. With virtually no help from mainstream media or the justice system, he was able to pinpoint what actually happened straight down to who gave the order, who supplied the money, how the patsy was chosen, and who squeezed the trigger. Dr. Pepper says he was taken to St. Joseph's Hospital and he was killed in the emergency room by the chief of neurosurgery, Dr. Breen Bland, who entered the emergency room with two men in suits, seeing doctors working on Dr. King. Bland commanded, stop working on that nigga and let him die. Now all of you get out of here right now. Everybody get out. And as they moved out of the room, the last one out was surgical nurse Lula Mae Shelby. She heard them gathering spit in their lungs and she looked over her shoulder. She saw them spit on Martin Luther King's body that was lying on the bed. Then she saw the doctor take the catheters out of Martin's body and take the pillow from under his head and suffocate him. That's how Martin Luther King Jr. died. That's how he was assassinated. The doctor says that he may have died anyway from the bullet wounds, but he didn't. He was still alive and still breathing. The chief of neurosurgery intervened and he made sure death was the result. Dr. Pepper knows this because the son of the nurse, Lula Mae Shelby, told Dr. Pepper under oath that this was told to him by his mother before she died. And when Dr. Pepper confronted a member of the Dixie Mafia, he said, yes, that actually happened. And that the doctor was actually the chief of surgery for his family. And that three weeks before the assassination, he visited them and he said, hey, if the bullet doesn't kill him, make sure you take him to St. Joseph because we will make sure he dies. Dr. Pepper represented the King family in 1999 in a civil lawsuit, and the family felt like they had some closure. The jury in Memphis decided that local, state, and federal governments were responsible for King's death, and yes, it was a real conspiracy between the U.S. military. Listen to what I'm saying, y'all. The U.S. military, Memphis Police Department, and the Dixie Mafia. Oh, that's cold-blooded, man. Just saying that, hearing that, reading that. It's chilling, man. The Silver Case found uh, the these people guilty where they couldn't find any criminal negligence. It only took them one hour to decide and... King's family's favor. Now, James Earl Ray, the guy who was who basically the fall guy for this, the guy that history told us this who killed Martin Luther King. He was up in the tree over there and he shot Martin Luther King. Well, the jury also decided that that was a lie. They don't believe it. Uh, the conspiracy, they believe in the conspiracy that that was somebody else that actually pulled the trigger. And that somebody else was a Memphis police officer by the name of Frank Strouser. He was the best shot in the Memphis Police Department. And he was the one who fired the shot that took Martin Luther King down. Whew, man. Lord have mercy. This is sad and eye-opening at the same time. Yet another CIA hit. Man, please, please, y'all, stop giving them the benefit of doubt. If you're going to give them any benefit of doubt, give them the benefit of doubt that they didn't do, that they actually didn't do it. Like, doubt that they actually did not do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, these people, man, 
they have no conscience whatsoever. If they did this, imagine what else they've done. They tell this lie. This is a big lie. Imagine what else, what other lies have been told. It's a cold bloody game, man. It's a cold, cold bloody game. Damn. I mean, I felt like it was a conspiracy all along. Didn't know these other details, but I just knew something wasn't right. I knew that J. Edgar Hoover was, was a monster and his name should be taken off of all federal buildings, any type of parks, any airports whatsoever. His name should be taken off his gravestone because he was a, a monster, an alien. It should be taken off his gravestone, totally removed from all everything, man. This dude was, well, he was he was the worst of the worst. He represented the worst of the worst for America. He would have been perfect for John, Donald Trump's cabinet. He would have been perfect. He would have been a perfect FBI director for Donald Trump. What other historical figures can you guys think of whose account of their death was an historical lie? I could think of a few, but I'm gonna leave it up to you. In closing, the Greek philosopher Socrates said, the only thing I know for sure is that I know nothing at all for sure. With all this lying going on, how can we be for sure that he actually said that? No more talk. What the ladies talking about? Yeah.